The people leading the Vermont Bioenergy Initiative are forging the connection between diversified agriculture and renewable energy production. These farmers, scientists, and entrepreneurs are at the forefront of a local production for local use movement, and they are proving that local food systems and clean energy production together are economical, compatible, and essential. These are their stories. I'm John Williamson. Uh, we're here at State Line Farm in North Bennington, Vermont. We've had this farm since 1936. Um, we milk cows for uh, about 65 years here. We started a biofuels business seven years ago now, growing oil crops and turning them into biodiesel. We started growing oil seeds about the same time we got out of the uh, cow milking business. We needed to keep our farm afloat, so we were looking at alternatives that we could um, you know, use our land for. And about that same time, a friend approached me about growing oil crops. He said, John, you should grow oil crops and make biodiesel. And at that time, I didn't even know what biodiesel was. We grew our first crop of canola, and we chose canola because it was a crop that we could handle with the equipment that we had on hand. I didn't think we could set much land aside to grow oil crops. But once, once I learned about growing oil crops, you're really not setting land aside. You're still producing grain, um, which really has a high value. The, the oil is like a byproduct out of some of these grains. I mean, we've been growing grains for for a long time here on our farm, we're just growing different types of grains now and squeezing the oil out of them first and then you know, feeding them to the livestock. So it, it fits in uh, really well in our rotation and it cuts our fuel costs and grain costs. In the Northeast, uh, sunflowers are generally planted between the beginning of May and the first part of June. Really probably the most important um, aspect to look at for variety selection is days to maturity or how early the crop will mature to make sure the sunflower will reach maturity before um, a killing frost. Sunflowers can grow well under many different types of soil conditions. Uh, they're not as fussy as some crops. They can grow in heavy clay soils and they can grow in light sandy soils. However, like most crops, sunflowers prefer a soil that's well drained. In order to determine the nutrient requirements and demands of any crop, the first step is to take a soil test. It's a relatively easy procedure to go about and um, the best way to do that is to contact your university extension system. Getting ready to plant an oil crop starts way before spring, really. You have to really think a few years ahead. You've got to consider what type of crops are in your rotation. It is very important to rotate sunflowers every year. Sunflowers should not be grown in the same field more than one year every four years. Sunflowers are highly prone to disease and insect pest issues. You have to consider, you know, you know what kind of insects or disease problems it might build up in the soils, um, you know, even prior to any preparations. And then the first steps are to plow the soil and then, of course, disc and harrow it. These steps are taken uh, late, late April, early May. Sunflowers are generally planted in 30-inch rows, although many farmers are also planting sunflowers in 15-inch rows. When you plant sunflowers, they should be planted to a depth of one to three inches depending on the soil moisture. The actual seeding rate for sunflowers should be somewhere between 28 and 32,000 seeds per acre. Remember that the seeding rate is not the final plant population. So you need to seed heavier to end up with a final population of 24 to 28,000 plants per acre. How a planter works to plant sunflowers. We're using a standard corn planter. We can change the plate sizes, meaning the, the device inside the planter that picks up the seed and uh, calibrates the metering out of the seeds so that puts the proper placement in a row. Each variety seems to take a little different density in your stand, so you can adjust a corn planter pretty easily to adjust the density and, and the depth of the seed. The planter that we use plants four rows at a time, so it's a fairly fast operation. So we cultivate our sunflowers. It's one of the methods that we use to control the weeds. There are other methods, uh, chemical herbicide methods of controlling weeds, but we're trying to grow our sunflowers organically, so cultivation is really the only option. To control weeds, sometimes using a cover crop or your crop rotation helps in controlling weeds, but the, the cultivator tills the soil in between the rows. And you can start cultivating uh, fairly soon after planting, just after emergence. It's best to get the weeds knocked out when they're very small. Once they get larger, it's harder. Depending on weather conditions, it's best to cultivate two to three times before the sunflowers are too tall that you can't drive through the field anymore. At that point, you have canopy cover and the weeds are crowded out by the sunflowers. 
Well, we know when it's time to harvest, the plant dries down, the seeds dry down, and we need to check the moisture content of the seeds, and we do that with a moisture tester, and when they get down to an acceptable level, then we start harvest. If you try to harvest too soon, uh, too much green material in the combine makes it hard for seed separation. Well, we've seen quite a, a, a range of moisture content in seed coming out of the field as high as 20%, and we've seen it as low as 6%. Any, any seed under 10% uh, is stable in storage, so that's our goal. How a combine works is it gathers the crop in the field, the combine clips the heads of the sunflowers off, it runs them through a thrasher, uh, it's rasp bars they're called, and it's a rotating cylinder that just kind of scrubs the seeds off of the head of the sunflower and from there it goes through civvies which shake the chaff from the seeds and then there's fans and finer civvies and it throws the trash that's separated from the seeds out the back end of the machine and collects the seeds into the bin of the combine. It's pretty complicated how it all works but it works pretty well really. When we first started we had a very old combine, it was in 1949. The combine that we just acquired in this past year is shared by a group of farmers so in our group we have two combines right now which is more than enough harvesting capacity. Once we, we combine the grain, we collect the seeds off the field, we, we haul it back to the barn and we have a, a drying bin. Uh, it's quite important to, to dry the grain in storage. If grain goes into a bin or a silo, it it too wet a moisture content, it, it'll mold and or heat in storage and it'll spoil the seeds. So it's, it's most important to have a large enough drying capacity to dry all the seeds that you intend to harvest. These drying bins work by forcing air up through the grain. On our grain drying system we have a solar assisted heating system to heat the air prior to entering the, the grain bin so it helps dry down the grain a little faster. Sometimes we've seen really uh, really weedy conditions in our fields, so not so much with the sunflowers, but with some of the other oil grains, but it happens in suns too, where you'll get a lot of green material. It's best to clean the grain prior to, to putting it into the silo and remove all those, that green material and just helps speed up the drying process. One of the, the biggest threats we have here at our farm is the wildlife. There was quite a bit of loss from deer in the last few years here. Just the way our land lays, you know, all of our fields are surrounded by woods or swamps and those deer get a taste for those sunflowers and they eat them when they're at that small bud stage and you can really clean out a field. Birds are, a, are, are another threat, take some of your loss and then some of the rewards are that we've learned quite a bit about how to grow sunflowers. I mean growing some of these different varieties some perform much better than others and uh, it seems like it'll probably take the rest of my career to even come close to figuring it out but it seems like it gets a little better every year.